Hey guys, it's Waffle again from Termation Tricosity, and it's been a quite a long time. But anyways, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get out of the very end of Pillar of Autumn using two different methods, one being through spawn bumping and the other in single player using a ghost. Now to tip this off, you're going to want to start Rally Point Alpha, you want to have Tilt and Cowbell enabled, you want to have four players. You're going to want to kill this elite here for the concussion rifle, I mean that's always a given when you're doing a trick. Now you're going to want to progress through the whole entire mission, going past the boiling pots, going literally all the way to the last BSP. You're gonna want to take this box here though now and bring it to the very end. All right, now we're at the final area here. Kill all the waves of enemies so no one's trying to kill you or mess up your setup or anything like that. That's probably the easiest part of this trick, I would say. Now you want to go towards the pelican, activate the cutscene, you know, the whole spiel, and the cruiser will now spawn. Now you want to gather six boxes total from these locations here. You're probably wondering, why are we bringing these six boxes? What's the point? Well, I'm going to probably tell you guys later, we'll see. So now once we get into this area here, you're going to want to launch them out of the map with a concussion rifle and a grenade, or maybe if you're being rambunctious, maybe even an armor lock. It doesn't matter which one really, just make sure it's up there. Um, once you get all the objects up there, um, launch up to this pipe here, and um, follow the pathway to where you launched your objects out. Now once you're at this area, that's kind of a dead end until you kill everyone, and hopefully one of the people there, whenever they're holding backwards and jumping, jumping will spawn up there. Now these, this is the reason, look at this! We're using one, two, three, four, five, six boxes like this, gonna wanna have to use them to push the guy out. Now the, guy, the initial guy's not gonna get out of the map, but since he's so far inside, so far into the elastic barrier outside, you're just gonna wanna have the other people kind of, from the corner with another box of shown, kind of make sure he's wedged up in there. Now have everyone else spawn with the guy, and hopefully one of the people should spawn on his head. All right. Now at this point, you want to set up a box to push the player around the corner because he's still inside the map, still having a, the barrier affect him. And then once he's about at that corner, you're gonna want to. Ooh, there we go. Get him right past that edge, and hopefully now, since you're so far out of the elastic barrier, you should be good. So this is probably going to be one of the hardest parts of the trick here. I'm going to want to set up a spawn bump as shown, and this is extremely tedious. You're going to want to bring the boxes back here so you can have them go up that ramp and be even more outside of the map so someone can spawn. So this is the reason why we brought the boxes here. You're going to want to use the boxes to stack and help you spawn bump out because you want to have to go as high up as possible to be as far away from the elastic so whenever someone else spawns they won't spawn inside the map they'll eventually spawn outside the map to so help out with this just bring the boxes you launched out before to help you out and um, eventually you'll kind of stack up a mini staircase and you'll be able to get high enough so all the players can spawn on you so far it should look like this though Make sure he's covered up and getting ready for the spawn clip out of the map. Finally, when you feel confident enough to try out the setup, have the three people die and spawn on top. Now once all the players have spawned on top of the box, have one person kill the guy under the box and have him spawn as well. Now what you should have is three people on top of the box. Now what you're going to want to do is have the guy that's at the highest point stay there and all the rest of the people come down and kill themselves. Now finally, if you've done it all successfully, one player should finally be out of the map. So that, yeah, that, that took a while, but um, that was probably one of the, this is to my only knowledge, the only su successful spawn bump you can actually do in Halo Reach. But now you're free to explore literally the entire mission. And the coolest part is that the cruiser's in the air when you're out here. No one's been able to get outside the map while the cruiser is still there, which is quite frankly kind of cool in my opinion. Now, moving on to the next method, you could also get out in the single player with a ghost. Alright, so now you're going to want to grab a ghost and concussion rifle from the boneyard area. Um, you can also grab a concussion rifle if you want from the beginning, but you might as well get it from boneyard, who cares. So next you want to progress through the whole mission in your ghost. Whenever you get to these staircases, it's going to look pretty tricky getting up there, but believe me, going through them backwards helps tremendously. So now you're going to want to progress after that until the very last BSP here, where you're going to want to be fighting all of the waves of enemies. Make sure to kill them all.
After that, you're going to want to place your ghost towards the edge of the pelican pad before the pelican comes. Now, as the pelican's coming, make sure you are not on, like right next to the ghost to avoid the cutscene because you don't want to hit the cutscene. Now that the pelican's here, quickly run into the ghost and board the ghost as the screen fades. Now the ghost should stay in the cutscene for a split second, and then immediately board the ghost right after the cutscene. Wow, you're in the ghost after the cutscene! Which is awesome, because usually whenever you have vehicles at this part and you go to the pelican, usually it deloads the vehicles, but because you got into it the last second, it stays. Super cool! So now launch the ghost straight up here, like usual, that's easy, and then launch it back up to the pipes here, as usual. Now that you have a ghost and you're not spawn bumping, things should be a lot easier. So you want to retrieve your ghost and bring it on back. Because you're going to want to make sure that you're not touching the barrier before you break it. Which is a huge deal with any barrier break. Whether it be for vehicles or spawning. Now you're going to want to tip the seat of the ghost off the edge, just like is shown. Then you're going to get out, get on that left side, then drop back down to the pipes. Crouch up to the ghost, because you don't want to be hitting the barrier at all. And then drive forward. And then break the map. Bam! You know what the craziest thing is? If you weren't crouching, you wouldn't have broken the barrier. You wanna know why? This is the same case as in Halo 3 as well. It's because you got in the ghost before hitting the barrier with your with your person. So for some of you guys, this area may look a little familiar. Well, um, actually, if you guys ever heard of a video, a video called Metastability 3, you know, a bunch of cool AI collections and tricks, we actually use this method here to be able to get the four zealots on the pillar bottom which is quite neat. Thanks for watching. Like, sincerely, I think it's absolutely amazing that you guys enjoy the more obscure and niche parts of the Halo community. So if you guys really enjoyed the video, you can subscribe if you want to. That doesn't really matter too much. But what does matter is if you comment saying, this sucks, this is the worst thing in the world, this is a waste of time, or saying, hey, this is actually kind of neat, it's kind of pretty cool. And even more so if you guys actually try the trick for yourself in-game. And thanks for watching, guys.